Hello and welcome to the Commissioning Podcast episode number 6 of commissioningcoach.com on air with Thomas Stünkel. Today I'm very happy to do an interview with Thomas Jalo. Hello Thomas, it's great to have you here. Hello Thomas, thank you for having me here today. Thomas Jalo is a strategic commissioning manager from Denmark. Thomas started his technical career as an industrial electrician with focus on BMS installations. This included renovation of all Herlef Hospital's ventilation plants, the large combustion lunetten and other construction sites. Thomas liked the interconnectivity of all the building installations and started on a further education as an energy technologist on Copenhagen School of Design and Technology. Thomas completed his education as an energy technologist and was awarded with the highest grade point for all students. During his education as energy technologist, Thomas learned about the commissioning process that caught his interest immediately and he has ever since worked with it. His starting career was as a commissioning consultant in Grondme, consulting engineering firm now named Sweco. Thomas has helped to build Grondme's DK's commissioning team, organize the working tools and workflows. Thomas has an ability to coordinate and manage large commissioning projects with many players, so the client throughout the project is satisfied. In 2015, Thomas started in Copenhagen airports as their only and first commissioning manager, with the main goal to develop and implement the commissioning process. Since then, Thomas has become the strategic commissioning manager and a small in-house commissioning team has been established. Thomas is the lead CXA on the commissioning projects. In Thomas' spare time, he develops computer software. Here to mention CXWiki.dk, the Danish Wikipedia for commissioning, and CX Manager, a free online software to manage commissioning projects in. And I want to mention Thomas Jalo is just 29 years old. Thomas, why did you develop CX Manager? Well, there's a couple of reasons for why I started to develop the software CX Manager. But the main reason was that I couldn't find any commissioning software which supported the tools and procedures described in ASHRAE Guideline Zero and the Danish standard for commissioning. I'm a heavy user of Excel spreadsheets to manage my commissioning lot and other stuff and projects. But, but as my projects got bigger and I had to manage multiple projects at the time, I was using too much time on, on updating and verifying the input in, in all my Excel spreadsheets. So I was in the need for an online-based commissioning software to help me manage my commissioning projects. That was actually my main reason. I needed one place to get a real-time overview of the status of all my projects without opening 50 different Excel spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. I can speak out of the same experience. So most of the projects I worked, we had only this Excel spreadsheets, even on very big, complex petrochemical <laughs> projects. So what is the overall commissioning process in Denmark, the regulations and guidelines? The commissioning process has been around in Denmark for, for, for many years. But I think that it was back in 2013 when the Danish standard DS39 for the commissioning process was released. That was a, that was a big stepping stone for the establishment of the commissioning process in, in the Danish building industry. In Denmark, it's, it's still up to the owner if the commissioning process should be implemented on the project. But when we're looking around in Denmark, we can see there's a lot of public projects that require some sort of commissioning to be used. And, and, and many big corporations slash professional owners, they use commissioning as a tool. And, and by professional owners, I mean owners who have had other construction projects without commissioning. They have learned that by using the commissioning project, they can save a lot of money. 
we don't have any specific regulations which require the use of commissioning. Hopefully in the future, maybe like uh, how they managed to implement it in uh, in New York local law. I do believe that some aspects of the commissioning process will be implemented in the near future, such as our commissioning tests. But it's very important to remember that commissioning test is just a part of the commissioning process. Because the commissioning process we're talking about is a process which starts at the program phase and runs throughout the whole project. I think the, the mm-hmm. biggest problem in Denmark regarding the commissioning process has been to make a clear definition of what it is. Luckily, now there's a, there's a common knowledge across the commissioning professional in Denmark that commissioning is a process. It's not just an activity. So just doing test in the end is not commissioning. Because mm-hmm. if you want the benefits from the commissioning process, you need to implement it in the starting in the starting phase of a project. We actually already have some 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 good tests in Denmark which look like commissioning. As an example, we have a fire guideline. It requires an interdisciplinary test of the automatic fire system. This test verifies the full signal way and the end functionality. When a fire is detected. The fire central or switchboard has to send a signal to our ventilation plant, and then the ventilation plant is hardwired to close our fire dampers. It's an it's an independent fire test, but we can see that a lot of the commissioning professionals are using these already required tests inside their commissioning process. Mm-hmm. I know you are working on the Copenhagen airport right now. Can you tell us a little bit more how the Copenhagen airport has implemented the commissioning process and tell us a little bit about the background, strategic and practical things? I would like to, Thomas. I was employed at Copenhagen airport three and a half years ago as their first commissioning manager. And my primary goal was to implement the commissioning process into their existing project process. The airport are expanding a lot with a lot of new constructions. So they had a really good project process, but without the commissioning. So they decided we need this commissioning process to uh, to optimize our handover to our O&M, operation and maintenance staff, and, and also get a better total cost of operation view on our installations. It was not just a one-time commissioning process for, for one single project. They like to implement the commissioning process so they so it can be used on all of our projects. We are an airport. And we have a lot of critical installations. Almost installations operating 20 hours, 365 days every year. So there's always O&M staff at work, and our installations are, are used intensively. Due to regulations and laws, we also have multiple safety requirements that have to be implemented in every single project. So we decided we would like the commissioning process to help us ensure that all the legal and other necessary requirements are re- included and verified in our projects. Besides that, we do also have an in-house O&M staff. They are employed by CPH. So that is all expenses to the O&M are paid by CPH. These people from, from our O&M staff, they have a lot of knowledge about the airport. They know what works, but more importantly, they know what does not work. That knowledge was to, to get into the projects. We want to use that knowledge early in the project stage. So commissioning also needed to somehow use the o m staff in our projects in the programming and design phases. We are also one of the largest private companies in Denmark with more than 2,500 employees. So we have many different departments. And the commissioning process was also to aim to to unite these many diverse interests. Some departments are focusing on documentation and some on uh, time schedules. How could our commissioning process try to combine the interests and help to verify all the different interests? Since we are are having our O&M staff in-house, And we're also having our own project managers. We have like two wallets. One of the wallets is is for construction costs. The other one is for operational costs. This is two very different wallets. 
And as you might know, Thomas, spending less money on construction often results in higher operational costs. Yeah, that's true. So we were using uh, we, we are using commissioning to combine the two thoughts and looking with a focus on total cost of ownership. So somehow using the O and M specifications in our commissioning requirements, but still focusing on, on, on what will the total cost of ownership be in, in the next 10 years. So after that, we, we, we thought, can we just implement commissioning and say, this is how we do it. But a quick interview around in Copenhagen airport, we realized that we needed a more strategic plan to do it. So first of all, we, we were around in, in our organization and, and asking, what is our primary goal with commissioning? Why are we implementing this? It was pretty easy. As you know, with commissioning, it, we had a good project which works on day one. The final project needs to be cheap, easy to maintain, and well-documented. But after that, we also asked, what are your goals to the different departments? Because each of the departments in our organization have their own interests. Of course, they want to, to help make a good project for Copenhagen Airport, but they also have other specific elements they focus on, like our documentation department. They focus on the documentation. How do they receive it? How is it named? How can we use it afterwards? We have someone who's focusing on our time schedules. Can we open it on the specific date? All of these different departments have different goals. So we took all the goals and tried to map them out on, on a big table. After that, we took the Danish commissioning standard and ASHRAE guideline zero and all of the commissioning activities in these two documents that we try to map onto these different interests. So if we can see that in commissioning, we have something called the systems manual regarding our documentation. Then we could make a, bind, a binding to our documentation department. By doing that, we were trying to show our other departments that we could help them succeed in their goals if they were working with us in the commissioning process. So mapping all the different goals and then seeing how commissioning could help them fulfill these goals. Then we created a, a flowchart for visualizing each of these activities. Like, how do we develop the owner's project requirements, our commissioning specification? We have some O&M staff who needs to give input. We have some asset managers. We have the commissioning team. And maybe sometimes we also have a consultant. We need in, in, in this flow chart, we could visualize what is the specific activities and what are the specific deliveries for each of the individual party in this activity. We did that, that exercise for all the activities, all the commissioning activities throughout the whole project. And by doing that, we, 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 could, we could specify in conjunction with the different departments, what are your responsibility in the commissioning process and what can commissioning do for you? So instead of just coming with this commissioning process and, and, and running around and, and doing commissioning, we were trying to, to get all of the other departments on board to make them help us work with this commissioning process. So it means as well, you did a very good thing. Uh, you have been involved very early in this stage with commissioning planning. Absolutely. When I arrived for three and a half years ago, we did not have a commissioning process at the airport. We had a lot of different activities who one might could think that was commissioning related, like involving our own M staff and, and how to handle our documentation. But we did not have a, a, a structured commissioning process back then. Mm -hmm. So, and with your software solution, CX Manager, you are able to fulfill all these requirements, yeah? Most of them, yes. This software, as I told you before, was developed to help me as a commissioning authority manage all my commissioning process. When a lot of projects need to be tested on the same time, I needed a tool to help me get that overview. And the software is a cloud-based solution, so all the project participants can log in everywhere and see what tests are coming and 
what part of the test that might 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 fail or, or, or which parts that we succeed on. But besides the test, the test is the part I'm using the most besides the commissioning lock. But I also have many different other different tools. We have the OPR, the basis of design, the commissioning plan, commissioning progress, process, process reports, site visit observations, accept the phases. Uh, it can be used by to, to, to many different things. And, and by the users of CX Manager, they have they have, uh, have told me they also use it for different kind of things. Some is only using it for the commissioning lock as a substitute for, for, for the Excel spreadsheet. Then they use CX Manager as an interactive online list. So it's different what people use it for. But the main goal is that if you follow the procedure in CX Manager, you will be compliant with the ASHRAE guidelines zero and the Danish standard DS3090. Great. Thomas, in your opinion, what impact has a CCMS, a completions and commissioning management system, in regards to the final plant documentation? Well, in Denmark, on our projects, we often use a structure called the IKT, Information Communication Technology, which is a document which describes how the documentation needs to be delivered to, to the owner. So that's our baseline in our systems manual in Denmark. And then in our commissioning, we have developed our O&M specifications. That together makes our systems manual here. In this software commissioning, the CX manager, it does not focus on delivering the documentation inside the software because we already have a lot of good software solutions around in our in our building industry which is focusing only on the task of delivering the final documentation so it is more like in cx manager we are doing our verification activities to verify that the documentation fulfills our systems manual okay Thomas, when I checked out the website, I saw there is a free version available. Is this really true? There is a free version of CX Manager available? It is true, Thomas. There is a free version both for private users, like if you like to use it on managing your projects at home. But there's also a plus version, which is for, for companies who like to, uh, to, to use it. It's free up to 10 users and 10 gigabyte of storage. If you need more than 10 users, you just have to send me an email and we'll figure something out. The main goal with CX Manager is to keep it free for everyone to help people have an easier and more structured commissioning process. This sounds really great. So where can our listeners find the CX Manager? CX Manager is available currently in two languages, Danish and English. The English version can be found on cxmanager.live. And .live is L-I-V-E. And the Danish part is cxmanager.dk. Great. So and if people want to know more about you, Thomas Jarlow, where can they find more about you? They can find more about me on, on my website. I have a personal website called ttj.dk. Or they may also connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm always open to uh, to discuss and, and have a dialogue about how the commissioning process can be implemented in existing organizations and, and how we can optimize our commissioning process. Great. Thank you very much, Thomas. It was really interesting to speak with a 29-year-old commissioning manager who already developed a completions and commissioning management system. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you very much for listening to this podcast episode. If you want to do an interview with me, just send me a message through my contact form on www.commissioningpodcast.com. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thomas Stünkel.